Hi guys and welcome to Business English. Now, Jerry here and today I want to talk to you about fluency. Um, the main key why many people take Business English courses is so that they can be fluent. Now, a lot of the people, I don't know if you are one of them, but a lot of the people focus on getting books and learning the grammar and learning um, reading comprehension and all of this is good. It's actually really good, but it doesn't really help you with the fluency. And you might be thinking, well, I disagree. And you can disagree. I mean, this is just my theory based on me trying to learn German. The thing is that when you read grammar and, and you study grammar, um, you make sense of it on paper. That's why a lot of students and before this, uh, before coming to Germany, I was actually a public school teacher and I taught Spanish. A lot of my students could get a 90 on a test and they could write sentences correctly and they could do the multiple choice to know which was the right answer. But when you spoke to them, all they knew how to say was, good morning, buenos dias, and donde está el baño, where is the bathroom? So what does that tell you? It tells you that just doing grammar doesn't work. Just doing reading comprehension doesn't work. Doing listening comprehension doesn't work. So then what works? As soon as I saw this in the beginning of my teaching years, um, I saw this and I wanted to change this. So what I did was that I switched. I went from teaching them the grammar to doing group work and doing practice. Because in reality, how you get the, 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 the fluency is with practice, especially speaking with a, not, with a native speaker. And you might say, well, yeah, um, I get to speak uh, to the native speaker, but actually you should be a thief. You should, be, you should not be a student, you should be a thief. What do I mean by that? I have been talking for maybe one minute already, and you have heard how I have talked, right? This is how we native speakers talk. So, one clue in which I have been using it to actually test this theory here in Germany, since I cannot take any courses, which I, I suggest that you take courses, of course, um, but due to me being a freelancer and traveling all over Germany uh, to teach um, business people English and, and so on, I haven't had the time to sit in a class. So I had to apply my own theory back in New York, here in Germany, and it has worked. Now, what is that theory to make you sound more fluent than what you actually are? I can hold a conversation in German, you will catch some, gramma, some grammar mistakes, um, but you will get the idea that I can speak more German than what I actually can. So, enough. Now, let me tell you how I do it. The first thing that I do is that I actually listen. But I just don't listen. This is where the thief comes in. I steal. And by stealing, I mean, I repeat what they are telling me. So if we are talking about a business process, right? And let's just say that we're doing this in German. Um, we're talking about a business process. I listen and I imitate what they are saying. I connect the words as if I am saying it. So I kind of think that they are, are an, an earplug here that are telling me what to say. So then I repeat this in my mind, right? So that I can see how they actually use the words, how they connect the words in sentences. So this builds my vocabulary and it builds my sentence structures, 
right? This is, this is pretty cool. I am telling you that it works because I am doing it for myself. This is not me trying to sell you anything. I'm telling you because I do this and it works. The second one that I do is that I don't translate. I try not to translate, okay? This is the other bigger mistake that people do, uh, the other mistake that people do. That is that they try to translate. So when you are speaking to me in German, it is common for me to be translating what it would mean in English. But there's, well, there, there's not one problem. There are two problems with this. There are two issues, right? This is three for Germany, right? So there are two issues. One issue is actually that if you don't understand the word while you are translating, you will get stuck on this word and miss the other part. And once you miss the other part, you are not able to put everything together, opposed to listening to the whole thing and then making sense of what that word meant. Now, if you don't know what that word means after the person is done, then you can simply ask, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. What does, it, what does that word mean? That's it. They know you are a non-native speaker. So they will more than gladly tell you what it actually means. This means that you were listening to them or to him or to her and that you are paying attention. That's what it means. And that you care to understand. This gives a really positive um, view of you, right? So the second thing is that when you are translating, and you are listening, and you get stuck, then you miss a point, right? You might miss the point. Maybe you don't, maybe you do. But then something else happens. And that is that when the person is speaking, they can see that you are zoning out or trying to translate. So then that will create a sense of the person doesn't really care, you know, about what, they're, what I'm saying. They don't care. So this gives a bad feeling. So another thing is don't translate. That is a conclusion. Just listen to the entire thing. If you don't understand, then just ask, what does that mean? Because as I said, they know you are not a native speaker. And normally people from other cultures, they are more than happy to help out, right? This is how to increase your fluency. The second thing is, the second issue or problem is that if you miss what they are saying, then you cannot do the next technique. And this, this is the technique that I love. When someone is speaking about something, let's say a business process, and there is something interesting or that I don't understand, I ask a question specifically about what they are speaking about. This again shows them that I am listening to them, that I care to understand, and that I want to make sure that they know that I am giving them my attention. Right? So when you ask a question, they can expand on the topic and you can learn more. And while that's happening, you are repeating what they are saying. Right? So right now you should actually be repeating what I'm saying so that you can get the flow of how I connect my sentences and the meaning of this whole video. So play this video again and repeat what I am saying.